Welcome back to my channel. SD-WAN has revolutionized the networking industry. It's liberated organizations from their inflexible and expensive private networks and reduced costs at the same time. What's not to like? SD-WAN management capabilities are superior to other available options, and I've been a big fan of SD-WAN as evidenced by several videos I've posted on my channel. But SD-WAN is not perfect. So let's be honest and let's explore some of the downsides of SD-WAN that need to be considered before you make a decision. Hi, I'm Steve Murphy. I'm a Vice President at ARG, and while I work for ARG, this video is my own and not necessarily a reflection of the views or opinions of my employer. As I said, SD-WAN has revolutionized the networking space. I remember selling our first SD-WAN network, I think it was maybe six years ago. It took us seven months to install, but it worked, and implementations have improved since then, and functionality has also improved dramatically. SD-WAN is now the go-to strategy for connecting offices to the cloud. If you're not familiar with SD-WAN, let's take 30 seconds to review. Businesses have mission-critical applications that need to travel over networks. Those networks increasingly extend to cloud applications. Now, these applications such as voice, video, ERP, CRM, etc., need to work for the business to function. Historically, businesses utilize expensive private networks such as private lines or MPLS to connect offices to these applications, which were generally hosted in private data centers. Some organizations ditched the private network and went to a VPN, tolerating the imperfections of the public internet. SD-WAN addresses the weaknesses of either approach. SD-WAN allows organizations to eliminate the expensive private network and utilize the public internet while smoothing out the performance of the public internet. Applications are prioritized over available bandwidth and routes tested to ensure that critical applications have the best opportunity to perform. While performance is not guaranteed, it is optimized to the degree that's acceptable for even the least tolerant applications. Since SD-WAN leverages the public internet, organizations can send traffic destined for outside the network directly to those locations rather than forcing the traffic back to a central hub through a private network. This actually results in improved quality of service for cloud-based applications. And since cloud-based applications are becoming more and more prevalent, this is really a big improvement. SD-WAN also provides a management console well beyond what's available to most consumers. These consoles are natively incorporated into the platform, so managing many sites becomes easier for the engineering team. If you'd like to learn more about SD-WAN, check out my SD-WAN overview in the link above. So SD-WAN has made some serious improvements, but it's not all goodness. There are some limitations. First, I've not mentioned security in the description of SD-WAN benefits. While security, meaning, for example, next generation firewalling, is a feature of many SD-WAN platforms, security is lacking in others. It's not uniform across the industry. Purchasers must be very careful to understand what they're getting from an SD-WAN security platform. Some SD-WAN products that claim to include firewalling for example, don't inspect user traffic. Others may not perform DNS filtering or intrusion protection or other common elements that you would expect in a next generation firewall. So most SD-WAN platforms perform security at the site on the SD-WAN appliance as well. This can place an undue processing load on the appliance and potentially sacrifice performance, especially if loads increase after purchase. It also increases the cost of the on-site appliance. Some SD-WAN providers have added different security modules to their product that require multiple decryption and re-encryption events to pass through the modules. Other SD-WAN platforms conduct their inspection and traffic treatment in a single pass, which is optimal. Some SD-WAN platforms simply lack security, but they're very open about it. But what we need to understand is the impacts that that has to our edge architecture. Still, other platforms have an expansive security strategy that includes secure remote access for clients. While not strictly SD-WAN, it, it does extend many of the same benefits to the remote user. So if you have security requirements for your SD-WAN deployment, I'd recommend an extensive requirements review before engaging SD-WAN vendors and using your security requirements as a key screening variable because you're not going to be able to backfill those requirements uh, unless you do something outside of the SD-WAN platform. So shortcoming number two, quality of service. As mentioned previously, SD-WAN was designed to leverage the public internet. Typically, SD-WAN will survey the available internet paths for the optimal route for a particular traffic type. 
This, in conjunction with real-time application prioritization, increases the probability of a good experience for a session, but doesn't guarantee it. Most SD-WAN platforms can be used in conjunction with private networks, so if you absolutely need to guarantee QoS to a destination, SD-WAN can accommodate a private network to facilitate that guarantee. A few SD-WAN providers have addressed the best efforts nature of the public internet by building their own private network. Clients of these solutions use the public internet to get to the provider POP. Then they traverse the private network to the POP closest to the traffic's destination. The private network eliminates the public internet for most of the transit segment, and you can get very near private network quality with these solutions. Other solutions use sophisticated peering relationships with cloud providers to identify the optimal path to the cloud down to the application rather than simply destination. This can dramatically improve specific application performance. For some, the public internet may work just fine. Know your quality of service requirements before you start shopping for solutions. It will make a big difference in who you might consider. Okay, shortcoming number three, vendor sprawl. SD-WAN was developed to leverage the local internet providers available to you in your particular markets. Whether that be fiber, broadband, or wireless connections, you can save quite a bit of money by going with a local provider for your sites rather than one of the larger carriers. However, if you go with the local providers, you could easily wind up with many carrier relationships that need to be managed, and what you save in cost might not be worth what you invest in vendor management. The solution here, in my mind at least, is to work with a carrier reseller. Resellers are in the business of having as many carrier relationships as possible. They operate on a global scale and usually have access to over 2,000 providers around the world. These resellers can provide access to virtually any provider at any location and they generally do it at the same or even lower cost than going directly with this provider serving a particular location. And they can frequently provide a discount versus buying direct because they purchase network services at a wholesale rate. When they add their margin, they're still less expensive than going direct, which is essentially their fundamental business model because if they're more expensive than going direct, they wouldn't win as many, as many opportunities. The obvious limitation of a reseller is that the client now has a middleman to deal with should they need support. My experience has been that resellers provide similar support levels as the underlying provider. A reseller's network operations center will do the tier one triage, and if the underlying provider must be contacted, they can communicate directly at a higher tier for engineering services than you would have immediate access to. Resellers can combine your fiber, broadband, and wireless access on a single bill with a single support structure. And most resellers offer a selection of SD-WAN platforms, so you can get your entire next generation network from a single provider. Now in our practice, we've discovered that using two or three resellers provides the best economics for the network. It's something you may want to consider. Whether you use a single reseller or more, you'll be able to specifically choose access you need for each location, driving even more cost savings. So you can get fiber at 50% of your locations and broadband at the other 50%, or just wireless in some very tertiary lo locations. All carriers are resellers of other networks, so if your preference is to go with a provider that has direct connections for many of your locations, they should still be able to put your other locations on the same invoice in the same service framework. It's simply my experience that the larger providers charge more for that service and don't support the off-net or Type 2 services as well as the pure play resellers. It's a value decision on your part. Fourth shortcoming, the last one, cost. It's been my experience that SD-WAN has a strong cost advantage to private network topologies, but your experience may differ. Also, if you've gone the VPN route, SD-WAN creates a minor network advantage and the cost for the increased capabilities would need careful consideration. You might be paying more in the end, but there's a good chance you'll have a better network. So again, it's a value judgment. When contemplating cost, it's my strong recommendation that you source SD-WAN as a service rather than purchasing a platform. Buying as a service has a couple of distinct advantages. First, you pay for the SD-WAN as a monthly recurring cost, which is in line with the other costs of your network and generally in line with the savings that you're going to realize. Buying as a service can frequently allow you to migrate to another platform without penalty if your needs or technology changes. Now I'm talking about migrating within the same supplier, so a supplier that has multiple platforms. 
um, would allow you to move from one to another potentially if your needs change. Third and last, buying as a service frequently includes a management component. You'll generally want to retain management control, but you may not want to be responsible for the care and feeding of the SD-WAN. Leaving that to a managed service provider allows your team to stay at a strategic level. If you have any other SD-WAN shortcomings, feel free to leave a comment below. And if you got some value out of this video, I'd appreciate a like by clicking the thumbs up button below. That helps me know what content I should produce and it also helps others see this video. If you think you want to come back to this channel, the best way of doing that is to hit that subscribe button. That will put my videos in your feed and allow you to return at your convenience. Thanks for watching and I hope you have a great day.